So let us jump directly into it. We are living in the middle of a pandemic. And I read that before Corona, it was predicted that by 2030, depression would be the leading global disease burden and that mental health costs will increase to $16 trillion. So now with the outbreak of the pandemic, through your lens, how is Corona affecting our mental health and what long-term consequences can we expect? Mm -hmm. So as you pointed out already, we face many challenges with mental health, uh, not only uh, being that these issues are quite widespread, but they're also difficult to treat. So there are many patients who are treatment resistant with the current treatments that are available. And coronavirus is only making this worse. Um, being that now um, some of the activities that ward off, uh, for example, depression, uh, just moving around, uh, exercise, uh, being active physically, that is very helpful uh, for keeping people in good mental health. And then of course there are, there are issues uh, related to uh, enjoying physical presence of other people, touch is very healthy. Uh, and good for us. And so we're, we're missing all of these uh, important parts of, of life that contribute to positive mental health. And so people that are on the margins uh, may fall into uh, mental health issues, not to mention the fact that you know, millions of people are uh, you know, uh, without a job who were you know, working before and so on, and others who, who still need work. And so I think uh, they're just it's compounding the challenge, uh, absolutely. And and I remember uh, we in Sweden didn't actually really have a lockdown when uh, things hit in March this year. However, because of uh, my mom is in a risk zone, I decided to stay home during the six weeks at least because we didn't really know what it was and you didn't want to go out and figuring out. So it was better to stay home and I remember that when I decided to, to, to go out and, and meet with some friends uh, at a restaurant, actually, it was very difficult for me. I felt like in the beginning when I came into the restaurant, I didn't know how to greet people. Uh, um, and, and the second of all, uh, they all were like, come on, go on and sit. And I was a little bit feeling like, uh, no, I, I, I think I'm going to stand here a little bit. So it can be also like subconsciously, right? Like the fear somehow isolate us. Uh, and, and that can be very, very dangerous. Uh, even if you're not suffering really from the depression, it creates um, bad habits and, and emotions. Um, now you're, of course, you're, you're a doctor. I mean, in terms of uh, research doctor, of course. And you've been a research associate at the University of British Columbia, as I mentioned. Tell us how you ended up there and about your experience and the findings in the lab. Sure, sure. And before I do, just building on your point about how this has disrupted uh, everyday life and speaking with my colleagues in the consumer neuroscience world where we're interested in, in implicit processing. And, and basically, uh, you know, for example, I was talking with Sarah Yu, who's another cognitive neuroscientist, and discussing how this, uh, this COVID situation makes a lot of what's usually non-conscious conscious. So we are uh, burdened with having to think consciously about all kinds of things we just took for granted before, you know, whether to sit to stand or uh, sit down, whether to you know, shake hands or not, you know, how to greet someone, whether, uh, you know, to, to um, you know, speak loudly or not, or, you know, how much can we laugh and stuff? These, all these things that just are you know, natural for us or were, you know, are now top of mind. We have to think about them consciously. And so we kind of can sustain a certain amount of burden on our attentional resources, but now that's really been inundated by this additional need to pay attention to everything. So I think that that also kind of makes it difficult for everyone. And again, people on the margins are going to find this too much to handle um, as far as uh, mental health is concerned. 